Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, and inspire, and on this channel we do a lot of either primitive build or primitive hunting videos. Uh, today's more of a technical talk or a walkthrough on cutting a bow stave. So we're going to grab the camera, we're going to head out into the woods, and we're going to go actually hunt for a tree to make a bow out of. Now my goal today is not actually to cut the tree and process the tree down. It is to show you how to choose the tree, because that's a tough thing to ask somebody to do that isn't used to going and cutting trees. How do I know what am I looking for when I'm looking for a tree to make a hunting bow? At the end of the video, I'm actually going to be uh, kind of working through some staves that somebody else sent in, and what we'll do is we'll show you how to choose what side of the stave to use for your bow and also address other problems within those as well. I first want to talk to you a little bit about bow wood species. Tree species for making bows is really important, and uh, I went through a phase many, many years ago where I was on a mission to cut and build a bow from as many different types of trees as I could possibly get my hands on. And I did it a lot. I did a lot of bows from a lot of inferior woods and honestly I didn't really discover too much that was terribly exciting that we didn't already know. Except for kind of the white stopper um, but we'll talk about that another day in another video. So when you're talking about the species in your area uh, you're going to want to be looking for the best types of wood uh, that you have in your area. And quite frankly, we're going to go um, Osage, Yew, Hickory, Elm, Hop Hornbeam, uh, Black Locust. These are really going to be your best options. If those ones that I just mentioned, those are the ones you're really going to want to shoot for. Are there other woods that can work? Absolutely. But you start getting uh, to where they start being a little bit more inferior. And the, the line in which I would say that you're really wanting to shoot for as far as a real scale of which is the best, in my opinion, still Osage Orange by far. And then uh, Pacific U is a great one here in the United States if you can get a hold of it, but it's way out in the uh, Pacific Northwest. Uh, Black Locust is another great option. It's got a couple little problems here and there, but otherwise makes a great bow. Hickory does have moisture problems even if we... Um, fire the belly and that kind of stuff we still end up with some moisture problems but it's a really really tough wood really tough wood and uh, makes a great bow it really does and then also like elm and hop hornbeam very very similar to hickory the way they're going to perform the way they take on moisture any of that kind of stuff but elm and the hop horn beam are a little bit tougher to split because of the way, especially in elm, the way the grain interlocks. And so you're talking about early peoples that are building bows, they're not going to be using the elm if they have hickory because the performance and the longevity is going to be the same, but the hickory is so much easier to work with Stone Age tools than the elm. And another really good tip on finding out what bow trees bow suitable trees are in your area is to simply get on Google and search for something. You can get into like Google Images and search uh, Hickory Range or Osage Orange Range Map and then you'll see something that pops up that looks something like this. But then also keep in mind that there are different species of hickory. You have pignut hickory and uh, shagbark hickory, mocker nut, that kind of stuff. Uh, pignut, I do believe, is the best, uh, followed by shagbark. But the hickories are all pretty good, except for the pecan, which is the lowest on the level of the hickories. But it does make a bow, but honestly, I wouldn't even mess with pecan anymore. I'm pretty much straight into the normal, hardest hickories like pignut and uh, shagbark. So you can be a little bit confusing if you just say, you know, hickory, what you might want to do is say pig nut hickory range map, you know, or um, slippery elm range map, that kind of stuff. Get a little bit specific. Now, once you figure out if it's in your area or not, then when it comes time to actually identifying the tree for yourself in the woods, again, the best thing you can do is start doing Google searches on the identity of that tree, and they'll show you little nuances within the leaves that are different from, say, like hickory leaves can look very similar to ash leaves if you don't know to look for the little stem. But if you do a little bit of work ahead of time, same with hop hornbeam and elm and that kind of stuff, 
um, they can all look very, very similar, but there's certain identifying traits to those individual leaves or even the bark patterns in some cases. So do a little bit of Google research on the tree that you're looking for or the couple of trees you're looking for. That way when you go out, you're already very familiar with it. And then also, if you find something you really like and you're pretty sure what it is, cut it down. Um, and bring it with you, but bring a couple of the leaves too, and then you can sit at home and look up the leaves. And there's even apps for that now. You can take a picture of the leaf and it'll tell you what it is. They didn't have that when I was getting started. So you kind of have some, uh, some cheat codes uh, nowadays where you can quite literally take a picture and it'll help identify it for you. So if you'd like to drop a comment down in the comment section and ask, hey, what about this tree? I'll, can, I'll try to get to everybody that asks about it. Um, I'll tell you what, at least what I know about that species. But pretty much everything that I didn't mention here is stuff that I honestly won't even mess with anymore. Just it's not worth it to me. I want the best of the best. And that's what we're going to do in this video is go out and show you how to get the best of the best bow staves. Now, there is somebody that's uh, used to say a uh, good bowyer can build a uh, good bow out of any bow stave and I agree with that any gnarly nasty piece of junk inferior wood a good bowyer can get a good bow out of it and I would agree with that however we're going to take it another step further to say a great bowyer will only use the best bow staves and when it comes to me getting or using bow staves I really refuse to use anything now but the absolute best and you're going to see it in the tree selection that we go through right now. All right, let's start off by talking about these little tiny saplings, okay? So I know a lot of folks will look at something like that. I mean, that one's not perfectly straight anyway, but they'll run with that and say, okay, well, I can make a bow out of this. And uh, the problem is it's going to have such a high crown. And what that is, is it's so rounded along the back that when you start removing material uh, to flatten one side, what is essentially going to happen, you're going to put a lot a lot of tension on that high crown back and it typically is going to pop a splinter and or fret the belly really bad so one this size overall i would say ignore that one go find a better one all right we got a nice hickory right here and it's a good size it's a little bit on the larger side but it's still this would be a, a great one to, to take and then split it in half and you'd get two staves out of it if it was clean so now what you need to do is look we got the species that we want and we've got one about the same the right size and a lot of people would come in here and say okay i'm gonna cut this one now one of the things you need to look at too is look at this bend down here okay we can kind of uh, we want to avoid that <clears throat> and you say okay well i'm going to use this side as the reflex well what happens is, is you come down the tree and then this side has reflex the other side doesn't what you really want to be looking for is something that's clean like a pipe all the way up and down that doesn't have any of these bends because now if you split it on the other side now all of a sudden you have deflex on this one that now we have to try to fix but overall if we stop from say right here here's another bend in this tree so from this bend all the way down to that bend that section is not terribly long it's probably only about four feet long but it's not too bad overall as an example now maybe we can look up the tree and check for or look down at whatever and look for any other issues within it so you get uh, kind of a larger knot cluster right here that's stuff to look for overall it's not a horrible one and yes you could get a shorter bow out of it and yes you could uh, even fix all of this problem with the bend but it's not one that I would say is a premium tree to make a bow from so can you use it absolutely a lot of people would cut that tree but uh, me personally, looking for the absolute best, I wouldn't cut that one. Now, if you need some like general guidance on bow building in general, once you have your stave, I've got a couple videos here on YouTube. I'll drop a link down in the description. One, making an Osage bow, but the me mechanics are really the same, even with the hickory. But then I do a hickory bow build with Stone Age tools as well, 
complete full build videos to really get you where you want to be in your own primitive bow making. And then I also have a book on primitive bow making on my website, huntprimitive.com. I'll drop a link down in the description for that as well. All right, now this tree here, it's quite large, but man, is it straight. Now there's a little bit of bending that goes on down here, but we can go up quite a ways and it's really nice. Now the problem with this one is it's a sweet gum tree. So we've got a species problem here. Now, can you get a bow out of a sweet gum? Sure. But again, it's not going to be a very good one. So we don't want to cut this one, but that's what you're almost looking for. At least as far as being straight, sweet gum's really good about that. And then of course it starts to bend right here a little bit. And then there's a, a knot on that side. But if a guy, if this was a hickory and a guy was looking to get, you know, six or eight staves out of a tree, this is a good one to cut and then split that whole section out. That would be a good size and it's good and straight if that is your objective. Now, if you're talking about, you know, using, making bows out of stone tools, that's obviously not a good choice for you. You wanna look for those smaller ones uh, that are a little bit more manageable. You're only gonna get one or two bows out of. And ideally, what you wanna look for is that tree that's gonna be about the perfect thickness. This is a hickory here. So let's look at it. This would be, you know, maybe a touch on the thin side to split and get to. It's close. It's very close. Um, if this one was straight. It's a hickory, so we got a good species. But the problem again, now we can see this great big bend looking area. You come down here and it's wiggly all down here. You can see how wiggly that is. Look up. You can see all the issues with this one. And so it does not, it's not a good one to choose. Now the size though, if we were to split this one and could get two out of each size or each side, then that's almost perfect when you're talking about a stone age bow because we can get the most possible with the least amount of wood removal. But that one's not a good one. I know a lot of people would come in here and say, well, I'm, I can deal with this and I'm gonna have a big squiggly spot in my bow and they might cut that tree. But again, I don't want to choose that one. I want to choose a better one. All right, so here's another one of these thin saplings. Now, this one's a little bit bigger. You might be able to get away with this one. It's got a, a little bit of knot stuff going on here, which isn't too bad. It is a little bit crooked, but it's actually pretty good up to about here. So you actually have a section that's probably all oh, 60 inches or so from where you'd cut it at the bottom. And overall, it's uh it's it's pretty straight and clean so it's it's actually a pretty good choice if you were looking for a quick and easier bow to make that you're not going to get two out of the issue you're going to have is because it's still so so thin in diameter um it's still going to have a higher crown on the back and could pop a splinter hickory you can typically get away with that a little bit more about this size is the bare minimum i would cut to make a bow and that's something you can wrap your hands around your fingers around like this so that's definitely by the time you take the bark off you're going to be down to like a paper towel roll size and uh, to me it's still really a little bit too thin but we could make this one work if we really needed to and it's straight enough we certainly couldn't get two out of it but I wouldn't cut this one either. I do believe it's too thin. Give this one another couple of years and we'll come back and that one would be a really nice one. All right, if you're doing modern bow making, it's a hickory and it's a good one. It's a really good one. Wouldn't be very practical with Stone Age tools because it's big around. It's a big old tree, but it is very straight. It is a really nice tree. You would get a, a good six foot section. Up above that six foot section, you'd start seeing more knots and a little bit of, of squiggle. And, and uh, really what you'd be looking at is saying, I'm gonna get about you know six staves out of a tree this size. Um, so if that's something that interests you, that would be a really, really good one. It's very straight. The grain looks to be running really straight. Luckily with hickory, it doesn't barber pole too much. So we've got a really nice piece right here 
uh, if you're talking about chainsawing and, and splitting them out. All right, we got a hickory here. It's a good diameter. This is probably perfect if you were wanting to make a Stone Age bow and uh, split it in half and get a bow on either side. Uh, problem is we continue to look around, we've got some knots, and sure, we can make bows that have uh, knots in them and they make good bows. We got a little bit of a, a curve, as you can see here. And then as we continue to walk around the tree, we start seeing more knots. We see more knots, we see more wiggles. And although the species is right, the diameter is right, there's a ton of people that I know that would cut that tree to make a bow out of. A ton of people I know. That is not one I would personally touch because I want the best of the best. So now it's important to remember, uh, I've heard people say that a good bowyer can make a bow out of about any piece of wood. And while I would agree with that, I could absolutely make a good bow out of that piece of wood. The difference is a great bowyer will only use the best wood he'll only find the best staves and that's what he uses that one to me doesn't make the cut it's another classic example of a good hickory it's straight up until here almost straight and it's got one spot right here in the handle that's got a pretty good dog leg and i know a ton of people that would cut that tree but that's not what we're after we, if i'm cutting hickory i want it to be an absolute pipe perfect on both sides i'm going to split it out and i'm going to get two amazing bows that is not a bad tree especially for somebody that's a beginner i would recommend really looking one like this over and saying it's really straight this way it's only when we get to this portion that we see that dog leg Okay, so what I would do ideally if you were going to cut this one, I won't, but if you did, I would split it with, so when the dog leg kind of comes like this, I'm going to split it with it, and then you're going to have a little bit of a curve in your handle area. Uh, otherwise, it would make a pretty decent bow. It's still not what I would personally cut and use. I'll put on the miles and I'll find the exact one that I want. Now, what we also have a lot of around here is we have some really nice uh, cherry trees as well. So here's a, a nice cherry tree. There's another cherry tree right there. And although they're, they're quite nice and straight, and we can actually get uh, bows out of this cherry, I typically won't cut any, even if they're really, really straight, because uh, it's a little bit, it's not a super inferior bow wood, but it's pretty, inferior don't get confused by the hickory leaves they're growing from a little sapling back there so that's a little black cherry tree and um, most of the issues you're going to have when you're looking at your species is you want to make sure that you're choosing the best species in your area so you're looking for the best species the best uh, straightness the best diameter you want the best of the best of the best and although we might have a really nice cherry tree here i would not cut that one personally you know, really the problem with these, with the cherries or oaks uh, that you're going to run into is longevity. You can get a pretty decent bow out of it, but uh, a lot of times those inferior woods, they just don't last as long or they don't work or split as well uh, as the best bow woods do. Same with like sweet gum. We can, we can force a sweet gum into a bow. There's a, a decent sweet gum, but we're not going to mess with that because we want the best uh, bow that we can get. So we're gonna put on the, the miles and we're gonna find the ones we want. And here's just another example of a, of a decent hickory tree. This is, you know, uh, good for a little bit big on the Stone Age side, but modern bow making. You can split that into two staves without a problem. Not a bad tree overall, but we've got this mess over here on this side. So we'd end up having to cut it here and then we would get up and then we start hitting this mess up here these branches and knots and that's a pretty decent section I would say that's one that I would I'd want to look this thing over a little bit more but I might would consider cutting that one Yep, that's a pretty decent tree right there in that section. I think you'd get two nice bows out of that one. 
that one gets the uh, the Ryan Gill seal of approval now the one here behind it there's another hickory and uh, it's it's got natural curves so this is something that we need to kind of talk about again a lot of folks will see this in the woods and they're like well I want I want that natural reflex and what I've typically noticed personally is when you take a, and they'll say all right well I'm gonna cut that down and I'm gonna make a, this the back of the bow and then you're going to have another stave that you're putting all the work into, but it's going to have a lot of deflex, which you could always put it on a form and force it out and, and uh, even harden that thing, fire it up, cook it good, and take a lot of that out. Um, but one of the things to keep in mind that I've run into is when you're specifically choosing trees that have this amount of... this amount of reflex already in it the problem is is a lot of times the tree is growing under tension leaning this way and when you finally and when you split it it's actually going to take even more reflex and might go a little bit too far or it might twist that's another issue this one's not too bad it doesn't have a huge lean to it but uh if I find one that's really leaning, I'll show it to you. But I mean, this is a bad example because it's not anything along the right tree that we want. But you can see how much lean this has. Say if this was like a good hickory uh, stave and it was perfectly straight, but it has this much lean. It's got so much tension on it that when you split it, it's going to curl because the uh, all the fibers of the wood are under a lot more stress and so you want those ones that stand straight up and down all right one more pretty good hickory now this one's got a little bit of a bend starting about here so it's going down and kicking over a little bit but that's not too bad we could actually work around that that one's not too bad we don't have any major knots on this thing it's really clean it's a good size it's straight mostly straight from the bottom up to about here and then as most trees um, go as you start getting up there a little bit it starts getting a little bit more wiggly but not bad not bad at all this side now you can start seeing hopefully through the shadows maybe there's a spot up there that's pretty crooked but it's pretty high I actually think we would be able to cut this one at the base and come up to about here and we'd split it and we'd have two good bows out of this one and then this piece up here it's got a little bit of character but if we've already got the tree down we would take that section too and i think we'd have another two nice staves out of that one i think that one is probably the most ideal uh one that we've seen thus far as far as cutting the tree and getting the most out of it that's a pretty good one right there now you're not getting a, a ton of staves obviously but i think you can get four out of this tree and uh you know if you're talking about stone age tools that's a good one to cut right there now, this is kind of a special example to show you uh, number one it's a dogwood tree we don't get a lot of uh, dogwood down here where i'm at but look how much that tree is leaning that's what i was talking about having all that tension build up whenever you split that it's gonna probably go wild on you. Uh, dogwood's not a bad choice for a bow. It's not my first choice, but I would, uh, uh, one of the biggest issues you're gonna have with dogwood is it does tend to have a ton of just little knots everywhere. But will it make a good bow? It'll actually make a pretty good bow. I, uh, I shot a deer with a dogwood bow, or shot a hog with one. Uh, not a bad choice overall, but for the area, honestly, I would go uh, hickory unless I absolutely just couldn't find anything. If this thing was beautiful with no knots and didn't have this lean to it, it would be a good choice. But unfortunately, not only do I not want to cut a dogwood because we don't have very many of them, um, but this one's not a good choice because of the lean and all like the hundreds of little pin knots all over it. Nice tree though, overall. I'll be glad to come back and see it. Hopefully it uh, blooms. I don't know if it's uh, a flowering or not it looks like it's a flowering dogwood but i'm not sure i've never been here during the flower season so the only one i've seen around here in this area though and there's actually another really nice cherry tree that's got probably two lengths worth of staves in it uh, but again it's a cherry i'm not interested in the cherries because it is a uh, slightly inferior wood so you have to remember too when you're when you're talking about choosing bow woods you're wanting to look for the best that you have in your area and uh, we see this throughout history as well that they may have a lot of options but 
they're specifically choosing one or two species to go by and that's because either the longevity of the bow or also uh, the workability of the wood so something like hickory will split out fairly well with stone age tools and actually cherry will is is as well um, stuff like elm makes a great bow also but if anybody's ever cut and tried to split elm it is it's a tough wood and we have quite a few elm trees not right here where i'm standing uh, but we've got elm and hop hornbeam which make good bows but when you're talking about using stone age tools to cut split process peel wood uh, those are really kind of poor choice woods overall the performance is really equal to that of hickory but hickory is easier to work and as far as moisture goes through the tests that we've run uh, that's a decent hickory right there but through the tests we've run uh, thus far uh, hickory and elm really soak up about the same amount of moisture so that's kind of a, a ongoing problem with the white woods and uh, you know we haven't found a way around that yet but uh, overall you start looking at the elms and hop hornbeam they soak up pretty much the same amount of moisture as the hickory does but they're harder to work so that for that reason i would choose hickory in this area because i have it over the elm or hop hornbeam so here's one more hickory we can come look at and then I think I've shown you what to look for. So this is a pretty good one here. That's a pretty nice tree. It's a nice diameter. Looks pretty straight overall. As you squat down and look at them from a lot of different angles, you'll you'll see things that you didn't necessarily see if I said it if I look at it from this height, it looks pretty good. When I sit down, it starts to have a little bit more curve to it. Um, not a bad one overall. I think uh, if I was looking for the absolute best tree I could find, this one probably would not be it. But it's not a bad one. It's, it's pretty decent. So just remember that again, too, when we're talking about really walking around and trying to find the absolute best piece of wood we can possibly find. We'll cover ground to find those trees. We want to find the best one. So I'm not in a rush to cut. And I think... You get a lot of guys that are pretty new to bow making and they're excited to get started and they'll walk into the woods like this and they'll say okay well i found a tree i want it's a hickory and uh, they'll come right up to it and say okay that'll do and then they cut it down and uh, that's when they start running into problems like this and say well it's okay i can tell her around this or i can heat bend it and it's like put in put in a little extra time really look if you absolutely have no other options then cut that stuff but if you can get out and hunt for wood hunt for it take a take an hour or two and walk a mile or two and figure out where the best trees are and while you're out hunting is a great time to be scouting for trees in the future so that's how I really found this area was this is an area that I hunt and uh, I've been back in here chasing hogs before and I've found, uh, you know, a nice stand of hickory that's got some straight ones. And so this is, if I need one that's really, really straight, then I uh, typically come around here and start looking around. And it doesn't seem to matter how many times I've come here, I always seem to find at least one more that I didn't know was here. And I think that's because I walk until I find one that I'm like, okay, this one is absolutely perfect. And then I cut it. So this one caught my eye from a distance. And it looked really straight. When you get up close to it, not straight at all and that's an oak <laughs> so not a good choice but put in the time and uh, look over a lot of trees before you make a decision and if you're if you're not the type of person that can remember the where the last tree was that you saw bring a little bit of flagging tape and say okay this one was a good one and tie an orange ribbon around it and that way as you're walking back if you say okay well I didn't find anything better you can go right back to the exact tree that you were looking at before. So. And finally, overall, I know we get a lot of novice guys, they'll, you know, look at something like this. And I mean, it is just crooked and snaky. And they'll say, they'll post pictures and, you know, and online, they'll say, is there a bow in that? Just avoid it. Um, can we squeeze a bow out of it? Sure. 
maybe it will look cool with all that snake in it and stuff overall it's really just not a good choice i mean look how crooked this thing is just avoid that get out and, and really hunt for for a good one i i would never consider cutting that tree um really at all i don't think there's any need to you need to get out and look for better ones okay so here's another really good example of uh this is a black locust and you can see it's only about oh what about three inches in diameter on the small end maybe three and a half on the other side normally a really good sized uh staved cut you can see we got a couple knots here they're not that big of a deal and as we come into the center of it you see there's a little bit of s-curve so if we look down this thing you can see there's a little bit of s-curve it's a little bit worse in person than it is on video but this one's still acceptable overall when i really look at this i don't want that s-curve in it uh, but overall it's not a horrible choice unfortunately the camera never actually captures the character in a stave okay so when we look at it this way it's actually quite flat across the back which the back would be now the part that's stick sticking up with a couple of knots and that little s curve so it's quite flat whereas if we use this side as the back and let's turn it sideways you can see it's got a significant hump right here and that hump to me is enough that i don't want to use that as the back i want the flat section to use as the back but of course then we have to deal with the knots and that little s curve in this section that's not a bad piece for sure but it's not the best piece that we could possibly get and if we flip the whole piece over which it still has bark on this side has that same s curve but it also has a little bit more of a hump in the center too and some more knots this actually has three knots so we might be able to still get a bow out of this side we can definitely get a bow out of this side although it's not ideal but we can make it work but this is kind of the bare minimum of what i would say is a really a usable bow stave all right let's look at the two staves we got out of this last log okay so remember this one's got the little wiggle kind of down in the middle and really clean overall couple just little tiny pin knots a little pin knot there not a big deal not a big deal a little bit bigger knot still not that big of a deal and then we got a couple of these we can really work with this the only biggest issue i have is kind of this s curve wiggle in the middle but overall it's not a bad piece but you can kind of see in the middle of it what we're going to have is we're going to have that offset handle which i don't dislike because if we align these limbs properly we can make the bow a little bit center shot but it might be a little bit too far off the center if you know what i'm saying mostly i just want to look for something that's a little bit straighter than this it's really good overall um and, and we can work with this and it'll definitely make a pretty decent bow but overall i normally wouldn't cut something that has that big of an s curve in it okay now this is the sister stave the opposite side of the other one and it is pretty good piece overall it's got that same little s curve in the middle which could work out to our favor honestly with offsetting the handle even though i think it's it might be a little bit severe but overall now this one it's got a little pin knot here a little bit bigger than a pin knot but it's not bad this one here is a pretty substantial knot will it make a cool bow sure can we still get a bow out of this even with that big old knot i think so not a problem i come down now we get another one another big old knot and then it's still pretty clean another little pin knot type of thing there overall not too bad either but these two you know two maybe three knots might be a little bit of an issue um will it again make a pretty decent bow sure it'll certainly make a cool bow when it's all said and done because of this but it could affect our tiller just slightly overall might not make the best bow possible but is it a decent stave absolutely is it one that i would say is an absolute premium no probably not but can we get a bow absolutely is it the best bow probably not so much okay guys thanks for following along hopefully you learned something about some trees and you're ready and feeling confident to go out and cut your own bow stave so good luck with that and we'll catch you on the next adventure